today i will discuss symmetry multiplication table by symmetry multiplication we mean successive execution of symmetry operators for example if we have some sequence symmetry operators say a b c then a the product a b c will mean that c is operated first then b then a if you have some initial configuration of an object or molecule like this then operate c on it first get a new configuration then operate b on the result get another configuration then operate a on the result you will get a final configuration thus the operators are executed from right to left this is the usual practice in mathematics for example if you have a function like this f x y you can operate del del x on this a partial derivative and on the result you can get uh, operate del del y this is denoted by del square f del x del y and what does it, this mean del square f del y del x this means that del, uh, del del y is operated this operator is operated on function first then on the result this del del x is operated these two may or may not be the same that depends on the nature of f such sequence of operators are commonly used in thermodynamics and and in every branch of physics or mathematics this is from right to left uh, is the commonly used sequence in product of symmetry operators now uh, now we will discuss symmetry multiplication table with the help of an example now before that before that uh, let us let me discuss the common structure of multiplication table suppose your your operators are written along this line suppose a is here then some other operators b is here then c is here write operators on this line and also on this along this column consider these as the first operations and these as the second then what will be the result of bc b is operated first and then c the result will be written here at the intersection of this column and this row here you, you will write the result of b b executed first and then c this is the way the multiplication table is filled up and what will be here what will be written here the result of c being operated first and then b these two may or may not be the same that depends on the nature of the operator or nature of the object this is the general structure of uh, asymmetry multiplication table you may take the first and the second operator along this line and first operator along this column that will make no difference you may get a different and the, the entry is arranged in a different manner but the final conclusions will, will remain the same it is up to your choice uh, how to take the first operation and the second operation Now let let us start with a concrete example this is trans trans 1 2 dichloroethene this is a planar molecule this is a planar molecule and this plane is the plane, molecular plane this is also a plane of symmetry you can write it sigma it has 
a twofold axis of symmetry perpendicular to this plane in this manner uh, you have a, you, you have a twofold rotation axis c2 because about this axis which, which is perpendicular to the plane of this paper you can rotate the molecule h will come here this will go there chlorine will go there this chlorine will come here and so on this is a twofold axis and since there is no other uh, rotation axis of symmetry this sigma can be written as sigma h horizontal plane so the symmetry elements are identity of course then c2 then sigma h and then this point acts as a center of symmetry because if you travel from this hydrogen towards this point along a straight line and walk an equal distance on the opposite side you get another hydrogen so this is the center of symmetry from chlorine here you get chlorine uh, so there is a center of symmetry also between the two carbon atoms uh, now we construct the symmetry multiplication table here write the operations e with a hat means an identity operator then c2 operator sigma h operator i operator in this column also e operator c2 sigma h i now we will write the uh, results of the products if this is the first operation and this is the second then E followed by E will give you identity so here we write E C2 followed by E E means do nothing so C2 followed by E means C2 itself C2 we can write down the first line immediately similarly we can write down this line also do nothing and do something means do something E, uh, then then C two means C two, E then sigma H means sigma H. This is I. These two lines can be written immediately. Now come here C two first and then again C two. This means the this H is turned uh, to this position and then again turned to this position. A total of three sixty degree rotation. So C two square is identity. C2 sigma H. You may be tempted to write C2 C2 followed by sigma H as S2. S2. This is correct. But uh, we can find here that S2 is nothing but I. Uh, because carry out here C2 operation first. C2 first. But if you level the atoms, one, two, three, four, then what will happen after C2? One will come here and three goes there. Two comes here, four goes there. No inversion of uh, associated atomic orbitals or vectors occurs by this rotation because in in turning the molecule uh, the atoms always remain on the plane no inversion occurs front side does not go to the back side therefore we do we don't need any bar notation now now so carry out a sigma h operation sigma h means reflection on the molecular plane what will happen the atoms will remain in their own places but the atomic orbitals uh, will be inverted or if you imagine a vector perpendicular to the plane that will be inverted by reflection so this 3 becomes 3 bar 2 2 bar 4 bar 1 bar and what is this by a direct or direct di direct inversion from this to this point if you carry out a, an inversion operation then if you have a vector perpendicular to this atom then 
upon inversion through this point, the vector will be inverted. So one becomes three, you know, one bar here, and three, uh, three goes to this position and becomes three bar. Look here. Similarly, two comes by inversion, two comes here and becomes two bar, four goes there and becomes four bar. So this total operation, this total operation is actually a inversion. Therefore, S2 is I. This result is generally true, not only for this molecule. For all objects, you will find that S2 is a, This can be proved by taking coordinate system. If, I, if time permits, I will show you this. Uh, and if you scan your textbooks, scan the character tables in your textbooks, you will find that there are many S operations, but nowhere you will find S2. S2 is absent from, from the entire uh, list of character tables. Uh, you will find that S2 is absent. Always there are, uh, wherever there is some S2 is needed, there is I. Now, uh, so sigma H C2 is I and also C2 sigma H is I. So, we can fill up the rest of the table very easily. C2 sigma C2 followed by sigma H will give you I and C2 followed by I. What is that? C2 followed by I. What is that? I means sigma H C2 and this C2, these two C2 will give you identity. So this is sigma H. Therefore C2 I is sigma H. Sigma H C2 is I. Sigma H first, sigma H, two, two successive reflections on the same plane will give you identity and sigma h i will give you what? Sigma h i means sigma h i means means sigma h then again sigma h c2 this is c2 because these two will give you identity so here you have c2 and here I C2, I C2 is sigma H, sigma H, I sigma H, I, I first then sigma H gives C2 and I I will give you I. This is just very simple multiplication table <coughs> but it is very, uh, very useful for illustration. Note here that uh, that uh, that in any column or in any row you will not find a single symmetry operator occurring more than once a, every in every row a symmetry operator occurs only once and every row is a rearrangement of the other row this row is a rearrangement of this row this row is a rearrangement of this row or this row. Similarly, this column is a rearrangement of this column. This is a very important result and it is known as rearrangement theorem. Rearrangement theorem states, rearrangement theorem states that in a symmetry multiplication table, no symmetry operator appears more than once in any, any row or column. Each row or column is a rearrangement of some other row or column in the multiplication table of an object or a molecule. Uh, with this, let me uh, stop today. I will discuss more uh, interesting uh, multiplication tables and explain the objectives of constructing such tables in some later video. Thank you very much for watching.